Hello Flutter developers. Today we are going to dive into a Flutter code snippet that creates a list of players with pagination using Superbase in a Flutter application. We will be focusing on a player list widget that displays a list of players completed with pagination and loading states. By the end of this video, you will have a comprehensive understanding of how this widget works and how to implement similar features in your own applications. So let's get started. First, let's look at the overall structure of our player list widget. This is a stateful widget. Let's take a closer look at the properties of our player list. Process state indicates whether we are loading players, showing players, or we have an empty list, or if there was a failure in loading players from any source. Is paginating determines if we are loading players for next page. This is to avoid multiple paginations called at the same time. Players is a list of players to display. Query is a search query for filtering the results. And next page is a callback for loading the next page. To enable pagination, we need to track the scroll position of the list. We use a scroll container to track the scroll position. The scroll controller tracks the current scroll position of the list view. In init state, we add a listener to handle scroll events and we ensure to clean up with dispose to avoid memory leaks. This is the most important code snippet which is used in pagination. When the user scrolls close to the bottom of the list, we call the next page function to load more players. This creates a seamless pagination experience. Let's break it down in the steps. Getting maximum scroll extent. Max scroll represents the maximum scrollable extent of the list view. Essentially, it's a height at which the user can scroll down to view all the elements in the list. Getting current scroll position. This current scroll holds the current pixel position of the scroll. This tells us how far the user has scrolled down the list. Then we need to calculate the scroll threshold. Here, we check if the difference between max scroll and current scroll is less than or equal to a defined threshold. In this case, I have kept a scroll threshold as 150 pixels. This threshold indicates how close the user needs to be to the bottom of the list before triggering the loading of more items. Next, we will call the next page function. If the condition is met, or in other words, if the user is within the 150 pixels from the bottom, the next page callback is invoked. This function is responsible for loading the next set of players. The use of question mark dot call function ensures that if next page is null, the app won't crash and will simply do nothing. Okay, let's now move to building the UI. Let's briefly touch on the other states before looking at success state. In the loading state, we show a loading indicator. For the empty state, we provide a user-friendly message. The failure state simply turns an empty widget, but this could be enhanced with error messages if desired. Now let's move to the success state. First, we need to determine the number of players. This line checks the length of the players list. If players is null, it defaults to zero. This ensures that we have a valid count of players, which is essential for rendering the list correctly. Now we calculate the total item count. The total number of items to display is calculated like this. If is paginating is true, which means that if we are paginating already, we are getting the next player, next page of players. We add next page shimmers to the player length. This allows space for shimmer placeholders that indicate loading. If pagination is not active, we simply use player's length. In this case, the next page shimmers is 3. Now, creating the list view. This is the main widget used to display the list of players. The parameters are controller. We pass in the scroll controller, allowing the widget to respond to the scrolling events. Now, the physics. We have set it to bouncing scroll physics. Provides a nice bouncy effect at the edges of the list. Sync wrap, setting this to true allows the list view to take only the space it needs, which can be useful if it's inside a column or other constrained widget. Now let's move to the item builder. 
The purpose of this function is to build each time in the list based on its index. If the index is within the range for loading new items and pagination is active, it returns a shimmer list item. This placeholder visually indicates that more data is loading. When the list is not paginating or it's not loading, we have player list item. If the index corresponds to an actual player, we create a player list item passing in the player data. This is this was all about pagination. But how do we do this pagination with the help of Superbase? So let's break down the top players function, which is designed to fetch a paginated list of players from a database using Superbase. Return type is a feature that resolves to a result containing a list of player, object or null. This suggests that the function is asynchronous and may involve network operations. What are the parameters that this function take? Basically, if you are doing pagination, it needs to take page as a parameter. Initially, it will be defaulting to zero. This is used to handle pagination by determining which set of players to fetch. Now we have to calculate the range of range for pagination because in Superbase we have to supply start or end position of the range. The range calculation in the top players function is crucial for implementing pagination when fetching data from the Superbase. Example, if you have 100 players and you want to display 10 at a time, you would need to fetch players in chunks. For page 0, you would fetch players 0 to 9. For page 1, you will fetch players 10 to 19 and so on. This prevents loading all 100 players at once, which could lead to performance issues. So let's see what is the start value of this range. We need to get a start index based on the items to be fetched based on, on the current page. For example, if items per page is 10 and the page is one, start will be 10. And the end index is calculated to determine the last item to fetch for the given page. This is inclusive, so the one ensures that the range includes the correct items. Now, Superbase query, we can use from function to specify the table name. Then you can mention select to tell what all columns you want to fetch. Then you can decide the ordering. In my case, I have ordered it based on in the descending order based on overall and second order is based on the name in the ascending order so that it's alphabetically sorted and the third element is based on when the player was created in a descending order. Now the fourth and most important uh, function is range which takes two parameters start and end. Now this limits the result set to the calculator range effectively implementing pagination. So we already calculated a start and end. Now, finally, when we get the list of players, we just have to map the players to a specific model. This is typically where you convert the raw, raw data, which is coming in JSON format from the database into a list of player objects. Then you can return the results because it's a success case. If everything works as expected, the function returns a success object containing the list of players. This encapsulates the data making it easy to handle different result states. If it's an error, we return a failure function. So if an error occurs during the fetch operation, like a network issue or database errors, it is caught in the catch functionality. So this was all about pagination using Superbase in Flutter. Now to summarize everything, the on scroll function is a crucial part of the pagination logic in player list widget. It effectively listens for the user's scroll events and decides when to load more data based on their position in the list. So we covered some very key principles today. One is dynamic item count by calculating the total items to display based on pagination status. Second is providing smooth scrolling experience to the users like using a list view with a controller to track scrolling events and a bouncing effect for a polished look. Third is loading indicators implementing shimmer effects to keep users informed about loading states. The range calculation is vital for enabling efficient data retrieval, improving performance, enhancing user experience, providing flexibility, and optimizing backend queries. By combining these elements, we created a robust solution for displaying player information while ensuring efficient data management and a smooth user experience.
Thank you for joining me in the detailed walkthrough. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more content on Flutter development and best practices. If you have any questions or suggestions for future topics, feel free to leave a comment below. Happy coding.